you are losing a lot of value if you can't make it. There's an enormous return on investment for any company that's paying a developer, a reasonable developer wage, and sends their developers here. I, I, I can't tell you how big of a mistake it is not to send someone to CPPCon. Hey everyone, I'm Shabam, a software engineer at Bloomberg. I work in the distributed build landscape, <laughs> helping manage and optimize the massive build infrastructure we have. According to the 2024 C++ developer survey, build times was the second most frustrating part about C++. Today, I'm gonna to be talking about a tool we use at Bloomberg to help with build times and how you can use it too. So, what is REC? It stands for Remote Execution Caching Compiler. It is a compiler wrapper we implemented completely as open source. REC transparently wraps around your compiler commands to facilitate caching and or remote execution. It is designed to address build speed challenges by combining the caching capabilities of Ccache with the distributed compilation features of DiscCC. Now it also supports distributed linking and linker caching. REC also supports a wide range of compilers, including GCC, Clang, and Solaris CC and can be used across multiple operating systems. It leverages the remote execution API, which is also used by other build systems, like Bazel, ensuring compatibility and efficiency. We have API-compatible server implementations, as open source do, that work out of the box with REC. So, how does REC work? REC operates by intercepting the compilation commands to either retrieve cache results or distribute the compilation work. Since it just wraps around the compiler command, you can have any build system on top, like CMake, Make, or Ninja. When REC is first invoked, it, it computes a detailed dependency tree using Clang scan depth, which provides a com comprehensive view of all the files and headers involved in a compilation. But the most important part is creating a comprehensive cache key for caching to work safely. Well, what goes into ensuring that we produce a deterministic compilation output? Let's look, let's look at those things. Uh, the exact compiler command goes in, so ensuring that different compiler flags actually result in different cache entries. Then we take the checksum of the entire Merk input Merkle tree. So all the input files and dependencies can be represented as a directory tree. With Merkle tree-based hashing, we can just get a single hash representing the entire directory tree. This ensures that any change in input files or dependency results in a different cache key. And we also capture other things like the environment variables and the relevant operating system and the compiler tool chain to, uh, into our cache key. And since we already know everything, everything needed to produce a deterministic output, we can execute this compile remotely on worker machines. This means that even if you have a local machine with limit, limited resources, say four cores, you can leverage a remote execution service to run your build with much higher parallelism, potentially using hundreds or thousands of cores simultaneously. This can dramatically reduce build times for large projects. All this is cool, but to illustrate Rex impact, let me share some numbers from our experience at Bloomberg. On a typical day, uh, we see about tens of millions of compiled that go through Rec, and we are achieving an impressive 80% cache hit rate on all cacheable compiles. About 80% of total invocations are cacheable, according to Rec. This translates to enormous time savings and resource efficiency across our development teams. Builds can be shared between multiple developers, significantly reducing duplicate work. If developer A has already built a project with a similar configuration, then developer B will get cached from developer A's build, which is amazing for teams working on the same projects. Then across different phases of the SDLC, builds run again and again. There's the developer local build, and then there's the CI build. With REC, we we can get cache hits across these different phases. If we run a build locally and then build it again in the CI, we can get cache hits in our CI and it will be super fast. And as mentioned earlier, we can distribute compiles and links from a local machine to a distributed build farm. Uh, this means builds on small VMs can outperform large physical machines. This is our architecture for single host caching. Then we can extend it further for distributed caching. With this setup, you can have a shared cache between developers and different workflows. Then we can extend it even further and achieve distributed build. All the components in this image are completely open source and you can use it today. 
So you can install React via uh, Homebrew or Debian today. We are continuously improving REC. As an open source project, we are excited about community involvement. We invite you to try REC, contribute to its development, and help shape the future of efficient C++ compilation. Thank you so much.